Last lesson, we looked at uh, range and launch angle. We looked at uh, launch angle being uh, optimum at 45 degrees, and that 45 degrees was important. It was important for that 45 degrees to work to give us the maximum range uh, in that it was a uni-level projection. Uh, Bi-level projections are different, of course. The projectile has further to fall through. We also looked at uh, two projectiles of the same speed, of a given speed, the same speed, uh, as long as uh, uh, the angles at which they are launched at are add up to 90 degrees, respectively, uh, they, will, um, they will have the same range, okay? Uh, that's reasonably easy to understand, I think. Uh, the effect of air resistance on the velocity. Of course, um, there's going to be... We only look uh, conceptually at the effect of air resistance on V. Um, the idea that uh, we're never going to do any calculations with regard to it. Air resistance is too hard, too difficult to take into account. Um, there's many variables, the temperature, the amount of water in the air, um, the, the altitude above sea level, all of those sorts of things come into account, and we just can't account for all of that. Uh, it's too difficult. So we don't. But I may ask you a question... Uh, may I ask you a question with regard to the conceptual idea of it? What happens when there's a projectile launched to its velocity? There's its velocity vector there. That one there. These are the, this is a horizontal component. That's the vertical component of its velocity. Uh, we looked at air resistance or the force of friction or just... Uh, yeah, the, the force of friction always opposes motion. And when I say opposes motion, it works in exactly the opposite direction to the velocity. Okay, so I've kind of drawn that similar. Um, I've said it anyway in the video. These, uh, this, this velocity vector v here has a, has a force of friction in exactly the opposite direction. Maybe it's the same length magnitude, maybe it's not. Okay. Um, the projectile on its way up has has G, this acceleration G working against it, it also has uh, this force of friction working against it. This is the component, the vertical component of the force of friction here drawn. On its way down, on this, on this, in this portion of its path, I've drawn a velocity vector V here. I've drawn the vertical component of the force of friction here, and I've drawn G here. G is always in the vertical uh, direction always pointed towards the centre of the Earth. Um, so you can see that uh, the force of friction on its way down opposes G. We looked at uh, resistive force. That force of friction uh, depends on, is, is directly proportional to this drag coefficient. That drag coefficient has no units. Uh, drag coefficient has to do with uh, 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 the medium through which it's travelling. Um, we take into account here uh, also the density of the air. That's a that's an insignia called rho. It's um, it's directly proportional to the resistive force. The area of cross section of the projectile uh, is directly proportional to the resistive force, or the resistive force is directly proportional to the area of cross-section of the projectile. When I say cross-section, I mean if we were to cut it, I know this is a terrible drawing, but if we were to cut that tennis ball in half and expose that face through there, then we would see uh, the area of the cross-section. V squared, uh, the resistive force is proportional to the square of the velocity. Uh, so uh, the, the higher that V, uh, well, imagine if we... If we double the velocity, what happens to the resistive force? It's multiplied by four times, yeah. If we triple it, it's multiplied by nine times, okay? Um, and we looked at projectiles and, and, and they're, they're the parabola that's drawn or the, the path that they take as a parabola. Uh, without air resistance, and then we include air resistance, and we we don't quite make that parabola all the way through its motion. Resistive forces work as soon as that ball leaves your hand. Imagine it's a ball that you're throwing. 
resistive forces work oppose that motion immediately um, okay next lesson Uh, did I also mention that I would like to have, oh, actually, when is our lesson? Do we have a lesson on Monday next week? I always forget. Uh, it's Wednesday. Monday, yes, we do. Next Monday, there is a projectile motion test. It will go for approximately 50 minutes, 50 marks in 50 minutes. It's only on projectile motion. Not on uniform circular motion, which is the subject we're about to begin studying. Actually, we won't get a chance. Friday's lesson, I believe, is cancelled. Have you guys know about that already? Yet? Yeah. Good. Okay. The lesson's cancelled. That's not a good thing. I'm just going to start this again. Sorry about the pause. There's something wrong with the cursor there. That's better. Oh, why? I, I just can't see this today. Sorry. I'll, I'll try and... Oh, what's going on here? Sorry, I'll just have to pause this. This isn't working for some reason. Here's a uni level projection. Uh, if we have, and I drew the the friction vector to draw that more vertical. This is the vertical component of that friction vector. Air resistance. Uh, and I'll draw it over here as well, except it's working, of course, in this direction. On the projectile's downward path. We have gravity always working in the same direction, of course, and directly towards the centre of the Earth. G, this guy, here. Morning. Ah, uh, thanks, mate. It's good. One seat, yep. I'll sign you off in a second. There's that cursor. Everyone see it? There it is. The time of flight is reduced overall. When we take into account air resistance, when we look at this situation, I always draw a cliff and I always draw it being thrown this way, I know. E equally, we could be 
we could be buy level projection where I throw it up here. That works also. Time of flight. Who wants to have a stab at what's going on in the first situation in uh, in number one? Yeah, what about number two? Decreases. And, and for what reason? Uh, the increase is, is probably a little bit obvious, but what why uh, decrease here? Time of flight. Somebody want to have a have a go audibly. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's right. So working against gravity and friction in number two. So I'm going to say increase for number one. For buy level. Number one. Time of flight. Decrease. For buy level. Number two. And, it, and it's not too hard if you draw in those vectors, the friction vector always opposing that motion. This is the vertical component of that friction vector with G working against it for most of its flight there. G working with it for most of its flight here. And friction, of course, working against it for most of its flight there. Okay. One more thing to say is that the range is always decreased. With air resistance, and that's um, that's evident in those diagrams that I drew in the last lesson. If we have a, a nice parabola, and then we draw our path, we draw our path here. The range is always going to be decreased with air air resistance, and I think that's intuitive. If you think there's a force acting on some velocity, it's always going to reduce that velocity, isn't it? If it's in direct opposition with that velocity, it's always going to reduce it. Okay. Um, got an image here. I can find it. Come on. Oh. Computer's not that fast today for some reason. There you go. Getting into the application projectiles in sport. If I take this picture here, we have three projections. One of them's uni level, two of them bi level. Make that a little bit smaller. We don't need it so big. Move it down here.
in this situation here, uh, we have, have the smallest range in this uni level projection. With the same initial velocity and the same angle, um, we have a, a greater range. See how the ranges uh, are through there kind of line up? We have greater range because of this extra distance to fall. So we'll just state that range increased Range is increased due to the extra distance, extra distance through which the projectile can fall. Thanks, Dan. Um, that's kind of obvious too. Easily intuitive. Um, oh yeah. The other thing I wanted to say, as as the height. This H here down the side, I'll draw it in a different colour. Green's probably good. H. Uh, is that easy to read? No, red's going to be better. This height, whatever that height may be. As H becomes greater than zero, the optimum launch angle reduces. What does, uh, if we reduce that launch angle, what does that do to our velocity vector? Yeah, increases the x and decreases the y. The optimum. And when we say optimum launch angle, we mean the launch angle that results in the greatest range. The optimum launch angle decreases. Um, we increase the x and reduce or decrease the y. I have a question for you. Can I have a go at? Oops. Read that? No. A little bit bigger? Yeah. Why is that turned grey? I don't know. It won't go back though, so this program fails sometimes for some reason. We can still read it. Have a go at this question, please, people. Challenge yourself. Cricket ball is hit from the ground with a speed of 36 metres per second at an angle of 60 degrees. It's quite a, a large VY. Uh, Sixty degrees, thirty six meters per second. Uh, flies a distance of seventy point five meters. So this range 
here, the actual range with air resistance is 70.5 metres. Find the percentage reduction in its theoretical range due to air resistance. What's he doing here? He's uh, oh, finding his VX and VY, so he's, he's drawn a nice little triangle. That's good. So we've got our, our velocity vector, V equals 36. And I'm not going to put metres per second. It just makes a mess. Our VX is this component here. And our VY is this component here. That's a nice straight line, vertical line. VY, VX, VX first equals... Our velocity vector times cos theta. It was 36 cos 60 degrees. And our VY. Velocity vector multiplied by sine theta. Notice how I'm putting the uh, formula that I'm using first before I do any calculations, before I put in my my values, 36 sine 60 degrees. We get two numbers. Does everybody concur with this? And this one here, 31.18 or 31.2. Boom, there it is. So, time of flight first. Why do we have to calculate the time of flight? Yeah, to work out the range, remember what, um, remember we're looking for this range equals our Vx multiplied by T. You could also say that that's without air resistance, that's Ux, isn't it? Ux and Vx are the same thing. Okay, time of flight, using this, dy equals uy plus ay times t. Time of flight is dependent upon the y component. Um, set this equal to zero at the top of the projectile's path here, okay, <laughs> equals UY. UY equals VY here, what I've, what I've calculated here, 31.18 plus minus 9.8. I'm going to put uh, the, the force of gravity, the acceleration due to gravity in the Y direction, uh, So, and, it, and it's down, I'm saying that it's down, T, I'm going to jump a couple of steps. T equals 6.56. 36, is it? Big pardon. 36 seconds. This. So now we have T. We have our, our we know what our VX is because it's UX. It doesn't change with, without air resistance. So that's uh, UX equals VX, uh, air resistance, negligible. Range equals 18 times... 6.36, 114.5. That's quite a reduction. Now, you wouldn't expect that, would you, firstly? A lot of people are probably saying 70.5 metres with air resistance. 
How is it that without air it goes so much further? It has a, a very high initial velocity, doesn't it? And it has a very steep initial velocity, okay? So lots of VY in that 60 degrees. So it's quite believable. Uh, percent reduction. What does the book say? 38.4 percent. Nice. Uh, yep. Sorry. One last thing. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. If we have a projectile, and here's its path here, and we look at its energy at this point, it's on the it's on the top of the cliff. What does it have at a total energy? E t e sub t equals what? Yeah, poten gravitational potential energy plus kinetic energy. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna say half m u squared. Okay, I'm sorry to make that a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, but I'll put the u in there just so that you get used to the u because u is the initial velocity there vector. At this point, v what is it? V e t is E sub T means total energy. Uh, yes, we have some, we have our X component of that velocity. I know this isn't the scale. Um, the X component of velocity is actually much shorter than that for the velocity, the initial velocity vector that I drew earlier. It's just a little one. Okay. At B. Et equals mg, the height one plus height two. Okay, imagine we add this height to it. Okay, h two, h one. Think like physicists. Plus, yeah, half mv squared. Yeah, shorthand and everything. You guys understand all these insignia, insignias, of course. Of course, without air resistance, V, X, or V in this case, it's just V equals U of X. I hope you understand that now. Um, if we look at point C here, C, same as that A. Yes, at the same level, yeah. So the energy, the total energy at C is exactly the t same as the total energy is at A. Yeah. Can you see that 
uh, you know that MGH, of course, is the potential energy. Um, I'm multiplying the mass of the projectile by gravity by H, and that's total H, H1 plus H2. Not so hard yet. Knowing that, okay, and we'll just say lastly, knowing that for those that, that are going, oh, what is MGH? Knowing that uh, potential energy equals mass times gravity times H. Gravity, of course, is 9.8. And kinetic energy, or K, we can call it KE or K, equals half mass times velocity squared. Uh, next lesson, we'll look at uh, our uh, extended response question and how to answer that briefly. Um, if anybody wants to, if anybody has any queries about their homework, please ask me.